Hey guys, for those of us that have been following the Gannon Stout murder, we have waited breathlessly for this trial to begin. But even more so, we have been on pins and needles waiting for Harley Hunt, the biological daughter of Letitia Stout, to testify. And that has happened. But a lot of people feel like her testimony has fallen flat in terms of, you know, where are the bombshells that we waited for? We anticipated that this testimony would give us some real insight to Letitia as a person, pre-Gannon, pre-murder, and what happened in the aftermath of that horrific event. Because we all know by now that Harley was with Letitia in Pensacola, Florida, when that suitcase containing the body of little Gannon was placed under that bridge. So we kind of assumed that perhaps Harley had been given immunity for her testimony. And so we thought that with that immunity, she would unveil some unbelievable insight and secrets to the aftermath of the murder, the cover-up that we have been waiting to hear about. But in fact, that didn't happen. The attorney even said at the end of the prosecution's questioning that Harley had never been given immunity, that she had come and she had willingly spoke to them and gave her knowledge of events regarding the trip to Pensacola and even what happened the day of Gannon's disappearance but that she had never been given immunity and that the statute of limitations has run out and she cannot at this point be charged as an accessory. So let's just, let's go back to the beginning of her testimony. And I will say this, for those of you that do not know, I do hold a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Massachusetts. I never went on to my master's because of, you know, children and life. I by no means consider myself an expert, but I, I am learned in the field of psychology. And here's, here's my feeling when I watched Harley testify. Number one, I think that Harley has had a very difficult life with Letitia. I think that goes without saying. And even though she gave us tidbits of information about what it was like to grow up with Letitia as a mom, she really didn't give us a whole lot. Certainly not, you know, the amount of information that we had hoped for. But we did get some sense that she was very controlled by her mother. And so in terms of trying to decide whether or not Harley Hunt is in fact a victim or an accessory, we have to look at a couple of things. Was she so conditioned by her mother to do as she said, regardless of what was being asked of her that she would go along with a cover-up either knowingly or at least with some suspicions that her mother was involved i would say yes and again harley has not admitted to having anything to do with it in fact if anything she really took pains to, to take herself out of the scenario at all, whenever possible in her testimony. I just cannot 
make a conclusion in my mind that I can say I a thousand percent can subscribe to. I, I go back and forth and tell me how you feel about that. Part of me kind of believed her, hook, line, and sinker. Maybe it was, you know, her quiet little voice. Maybe it was, you know, just her overall very, you know, meek behavior on the stand. Maybe it was her tears. Uh, maybe it was the way she described kind of being such a yes woman to Letitia. I don't know. Part of me really just believed it. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's that. <laughs> she knew nothing about it. And then another part of me says, well, that that just it doesn't even make sense. That's baloney. There's no way you drove around with this deceased child in the car cross country and had no idea that he was there. There's no way that you were in this motel or hotel room with your mother and she left to go dispose of this child and you don't even know that she left the hotel room. I also keep going back to the fact that, and I, I this is, I don't mean to sound gruesome here, but you know, a a deceased body is is heavy. It's where we get the term dead weight. An 11 year old, even a small 11 year old is going to be, you know, substantially heavy and then the weight of this suitcase. Uh, I just have a hard time believing that with no assistance that Letitia was able to load this, so awful to say, the suitcase slash child into the car, unload him, you know, dispose of him off the highway completely by herself, no assistance. I mean, it's possible. Anything is possible, and especially with the um, amount of adrenaline that likely would have been going through Letitia's, you know, body at that time as she was trying to get rid of him and, you know, cover her tracks. I guess it's possible. But part of me is just like, come on, like, there's no way. Do I think that Harley would have helped her mother if her mother insisted that that's what she was going to do? I think she would have. I think that she definitely was controlled enough by Letitia that she would have done it. Now, one of the things that some people point out is how different Harley's demeanor was on the stand compared to her social media persona, which is that of a very self-assured young woman, micro blogger, you know, more often than not clad only in, you know, little bikinis who is very active in promoting some of her sponsors, um, jewelry, makeup, and, you know, swimsuits. And she has a, a very big following. No doubt, you know, after her name became connected to this case, she probably gained even more followers than she had. Um, and she definitely does not come off on social media as somebody who uh, is not outgoing or somebody who is very quiet and very timid at all. So I think that's kind of rubbing some people the wrong way is they believe that her demeanor on the stand was nothing more than show. You know, absolutely that could be true. Absolutely that absolutely could be true. However, if in fact she was abused by Letitia her entire life, or even if not necessarily abused, if she was very controlled, you know, very micromanaged by Letitia, if it was, I say jump and you jump, no questions asked, and that was the type of relationship that she had with her mother, being only feet away from her, testifying essentially against her, would be something that, I would imagine would cause anybody to 
you know, kind of be more withdrawn, you know, more mousy in that moment. She was very emotional. She cried several times, which, you know, was very heartbreaking because you can only imagine how her life changed so quickly um, following the, the disappearance and ultimately the murder of Gannon. So I'm not worried about the fact that, you know, she was a different type of Harley than we're used to seeing if you follow her on social media. I was very surprised that she really didn't offer us much. Like I said, where are the bombshells? Like I am waiting to hear in depth what Letitia is like on the day to day. Who is she? Before we ever heard her name, what was she like? What is she like behind closed doors? And here's the little bit that we know via Harley. She describes her mother as somebody who seemed to treat all the children equally, including Gannon. She was very um, clear in her answer as to whether or not Gannon was, you know, the child that was singled out, the Cinderella effect of the family. You know, did Letitia have it out for him? Did she treat him unfairly? Did she punish him more than the other children? And Harley says no, she didn't. She expresses that her mother was unhappy with Al traveling and that she wanted more help from him at home and she wanted him to be home more often. But beyond that, she doesn't talk about Letitia being mean or cruel to the children. She does make several references to the fact that her mother was a domineering woman, you know, that she set down rules. The expectation for all of the children, her biological and her stepchildren, was that you would follow those rules. And if you didn't, there would be consequences. And the consequences were not really laid out for us. Um, although Harley did make one or two references to the fact that if she were disrespectful, if she were to question her mother in the um, events following Gannon's disappearance, you know, why are you getting this rent-a-car? Why did you leave it at the airport? You know, if she were to question her on any of those things that uh, Letitia was not offering the information for, that she would um, potentially get very upset with her. And she even at one point says that her mother would have smacked her in the face. So, you know, that that was unsettling to hear, but it, really that was the only time that she referenced Letitia in any way that could have been taken as abusive. So she talks about them moving around a lot. She went over um, how she felt when her mother met Elle because she had just gone through the death of her own father, which this is a little bit, you know, heartbreaking. She says that she never really knew the truth behind her own father's, her biological father's passing, which allegedly was an overdose until after all began and stuff. And she found this out on social media. So that had to be pretty traumatic. Um, but if she didn't know the truth of that, is, is that points for Letitia? Is that saying that Letitia was trying to, um, not have Harley know that, like some, you know, some type of nurturing moment where she didn't want her to know the truth. You know, it seems like for all her faults in her relationship with Harley, it does seem like Letitia was very close to Harley. They had a very um, tight relationship. Now, whether that was unhealthy, like um, toxic, closeness, you know, um, an unhealthy attachment, or whether or not it was because Letitia had been a single mom with her for, you know, some period of time when she separated from her father when Harley was six, and it was, you know, just the two of them against the world type of thing. You know, single 
mothers specifically and daughters can, you know, often be very close and yet have somewhat of a toxic relationship because a lot of times you find this dynamic where the parent may cling to the child too much or rely on the mother too, or excuse me, the child too much or um, even treat that child to some degree more like a friend than a child. So, you know, we see that dynamic, but even though it looks a, potentially a little bit unhealthy, it, it wasn't huge in terms of um, something that was going to be a bombshell. So she describes how she, Harley, describes how, you know, at first it was kind of just everybody trying to get used to each other, the blended family type of thing, but eventually they all settled in. And she describes being very close to Gannon and to his little sister. And that, you know, even when the parents would have disagreements, which she said was often, you know, she described kind of the little ones coming into her room and her putting the TV up more so that they wouldn't hear any arguing. And it just seems like she was a really good big sister to them. There was a lot of text messages that were put up on the screen for us between Letitia and Harley. And when we get to the candle incident that we have heard so much about, I was, I was really hopeful going into that that we would learn something other than this recycled story that Letitia just keeps giving us about the candle incident. Because to this day, we have no idea if this candle thing even, even happened. I mean, we know that there was a candle. We know there was burns to the rug. We know that there was, you know, burns to Gannon and burns to Letitia. We know something happened, but we can't rely on anything that Letitia ever says. So we really were putting all our eggs in a basket when it came to Harley and the candle. What did she know? What really happened that evening? And so we see that um, Harley's at work and Letitia is messaging her to tell her about the candle. <laughs> Except that in true teenager fashion, you know, Harley isn't reading them closely. Now, you know, she's at work, so maybe she's just skimming them quickly. But she's not even getting the story straight. And somehow she thinks that the mother's talking about the dogs instead of poor Gannon. And pretty much all she ever answers in most of her text messages to Letitia on any subject is OMG. OMG. So, you know, she thinks that her mother's talking about the dogs. So we have Letitia sending her like message after message, explaining everything that happened that evening. And then we have Harley just kind of like, oh, how's the dog? Was my dog, you know, is the dog chance okay? Then Letitia's getting annoyed and she's like, can you read? Read it again. I didn't say anything about the dog. So we didn't get much at all in those text messages. So then Harley describes coming home that night. And she says that the house felt weird. That Letitia is telling her this whole story, all this like rigmarole about how Gannon is so upset and sorry about knocking over the candle that he's out in the street yelling about how he hates his life and, you know, that Letitia's scared of him because, you know, he's acting weird. Okay, so he's 11. And my thing is this. If, in fact, you have an 11-year-old who's suddenly acting weird, whatever that means, it would be really strange to me that how you would handle that this sudden personality change of an 11 year old that's actually scaring you as a grown ass woman is that you would leave him to be asleep downstairs where it's now described as being cold because all the windows are open to get the smoke out of the house from this candle instant instance. So now this poor 11 year old is downstairs by himself and everybody else, Harley, the little one, the little sister, and Letitia, 
all bunk upstairs together for the evening. Remember, Al's gone and leave Gannon downstairs. That is so effing bizarre to me. If you are so frightened because this 11 year old is suddenly acting so strange that you feel the need to express this to your daughter and you're actually using, you know, descriptive words such as scared to describe how you're feeling about his behavior, would you not be monitoring him? Would that not be every reason for somebody to stay close to him that evening? Now, allegedly, he is so upset and he's acting out of sorts because he is so um, sorry and apologetic about knocking over this candle. Um, Harley states that she did not think that Al was going to be very upset about it. That contradicts what we heard Letitia saying in early police interviews where she described Al as almost volatile when it comes to any kind of mess or anything, you know, small going awry that he's going to just, you know, he's going to flip out. And that that's why Letitia and Gannon were so beside themselves, you know, over this whole candle ordeal. Harley describes it completely differently. She says, Al's not like that. Al doesn't, you know, get flustered or get upset about little things. So moving forward to the next day. And she does state that she's aware that Gannon is in fact home and in his room. She didn't know if he was awake or asleep, but she was there because then there's also this other weird thing where Letitia takes Harley and she's like, we, arm to arm, we should go downstairs and say goodnight to Gannon, you know, making a point to make sure that she goes down there as if she wants to make sure that she sees Gannon, which is really weird. You know, Harley even thinks it's weird. She's like, okay, you know, let's go downstairs together and say goodnight to Gannon. You know, I don't know who does that. I don't see that happening in most families. So the next day rolls around. Harley says that she wakes up early and she doesn't see her mom, but she doesn't know if her mom was in the house or not. And then she leaves for work. She had to be at her job really pretty early, like 8.30. So she's up and she's gone. And she has one message early from her to her mom where she's basically just saying, you know, are you here? She then describes how her mom reaches out to her about the the um, bath salt instances. Well, I guess I'm jumping a little ahead. So Gannon, she gets a message from Gannon's phone. And she didn't find that weird. Gannon just happened at the time. She didn't find it weird that Gannon messages her, hey, you know, Tisha, Tisha has left her phone at home. If you need anything, text my phone because it doesn't go to school that day. At the time, she didn't find that unusual. Now, of course, she does because she says now that she knows what really happened this day or to some degree knows, maybe only knows as much as we know, maybe knows a lot more that she, she finds it weird because her mother is like most people in America today you know, glued to the phone, always has it with her, and that it would be strange that this would be the one day that she wouldn't have it with her. So she describes that she gets messages from um, Letitia at some some point in there where she's telling her about these um, messages from Al that supposedly Gannon is asking his father about bath salts and how some older kid in the neighborhood, an older brother of his friend, you know, is asking him to bring him bath salts. And Harley states that, you know, she didn't pay any attention to those messages at the time, really. She actually didn't even answer the messages. You can see that she didn't respond to them because she didn't know what the hell her mother was talking about. She only knew bath salts is something that you use to relax in the bath and didn't understand that they could be used for the purposes of getting high. So she had no reason to, she just kind of was like, what? You know, what? what? Gannon wants bath salts to give to some other boy. It's weird. So she talks about how when she got home, 
that dollar store trip that kind of was the first thing that put um, Harley right there in the cover up that made people raise an eyebrow. She's the one that goes to the dollar store to get the items that we now know would have been used to clean up a crime scene. And she is asked about going to the Dollar Tree to get all of these cleaning products. And her version of that is that her mother supposedly Googled how to clean up after the candle, the burns on you know the sofa and the rug. And that these are the items that she saw in her Google search on how she could clean up this damage. So she states that the dollar store trip was very innocent. You know, that she was sent to go get these cleaning supplies to clean up after the candle because, you know, her mother had found some home remedy online and that she was asked to take her little stepsister with her. And I don't know, I, to me, that kind of makes sense. Um, because while she's at the dollar store, she also buys some other stuff, including some lotion for herself, some, a couple of snacks, I guess, you know, looking back at it and listening to her testimony, that does make sense because if this young girl is sent to the dollar store knowingly to retrieve products to clean up the crime scene, the murder of her stepbrother, would she necessarily be taking the time to grab a snack and, you know, some lovely body lotion for herself. So I don't know. I, I think I believe her on that one. She goes on to say that, you know, her mother has informed her that Gannon is at a friend's house, not unusual, she claims, and that he is given, I think, the time frame that we've all heard, the six o'clock-ish curfew, and that the, they're all going to go to dinner for sushi. She says when he doesn't return home initially, right on time, nobody, including Letitia, is showing any kind of concern. You know, she kind of makes a flippant joke. I guess he didn't want sushi. And Harley says that he, in fact, is usually very punctual. But even somebody, you know, especially a kid who always comes home on time, if he's a little bit late, even just this once, you're not going to freak out. You know, if anything, you're probably going to start off with annoyance in your head because you're waiting to go to dinner and he's holding you up. But it soon becomes clear that he's not returning anytime soon. The evening is going on and there's no sign of Gannon. And Harley describes, you know, being very concerned. And she says that Letitia is acting appropriate at this point for the situation. She's showing concern. And they begin going and looking for him. When they go to the house where Gannon is alleged to have gone to play with this boy and is told that he never went there, that Harley becomes increasingly nervous. She starts going to look down at the schoolyard of his school. You know, she's um, texting with her mom and uh, urging her mom to ask the little sister you know, um, about different friends and if she knows where they live. Um, and if she doesn't know the address, does she know what the house looks like? Does she look, know what cars looked like in the driveway? And she's driving around hoping to kind of, you know, get some of these details so she can knock on doors and ask if anyone has seen Gannon. She then goes forward and she starts to talk about, you know, as the case progressed, that her mother starts to give her varying accounts of the day that he went missing, that her mother is basically demanding and or pressuring her not to talk to authorities. Don't open the door for the police. Don't talk to them. Don't tell them anything. And her mother kind of gives her the reason that it's because you're a minor and they shouldn't be questioning you without me. Now, when I think of minor, I got to be honest, I'm thinking of somebody who's, you know, 12, 13 years old. The fact that you know, this young woman was a hop, skip and jump away from being an adult. And it seems like, you know, even in all the police interrogations, that is always Letitia's go to. She's a minor. She's a minor. She's a minor. They shouldn't have done this to her because she's a minor. They shouldn't have done that to her because she's a minor. 17 years old, if you are potentially um, involved as an accessory to a crime or you have knowledge of an 11 year old being murdered, 
I, I would say that it is appropriate to be treated as an adult. So her version of events kind of line up with Letitia's brother, that when the grandma, aunt, and uncle come down and they were emptying out their personal belongings to take with them because Letitia was at that point leaving the house, and I've, I've jumped forward a bit, that the police were searching every item that came out of the house. The brother told us that in his testimony, and Harley reiterates that, that, you know, even if it was a book, they're flipping through every page. So she does not believe that Gannon was in, in that van, the initial van rented. So when they moved out and went to stay at a hotel, when grandma and aunt and uncle came down, a lot of people have questioned whether or not that was the moment that she took Gannon with them. Because I think, you know, the brother testified that he saw this suitcase and that he was told that there was softball equipment in it. But, you know, he did say police checked everything coming out of that house and Harley says the same thing. But then there comes a point where they're all together and Letitia says she has to leave to go get dog food. And the brother testified that she was gone for a long time, that he even started, you know, calling family members and being like, she's been gone a really long time. And he was trying to reach out to her. And Harley says that her mother was gone for at least two to two and a half hours. And that when she asked her mother what took so long, her mother said she did not have GPS on and she got lost getting the dog food. Was that the moment that under the radar, she went back took Gannon from wherever he was located and at that point put him in the suitcase and then kept it with them for the remainder of the time until they got to Pensacola, it would kind of line up because it seems to be the only point in time where Letitia, from the time that they all left the main home, was alone for a substantial amount of time. Because if she didn't do it then, then she would have had to do it while she was with Harley. And at this point, I, I don't know that anybody really believes that. Well, I guess some people would believe because a lot of people still believe that she knew at the doll store point. But you would have to believe that Harley already at this point is aware of what her mother has done. But her story, her testimony really seems to line up right through this point with the brother's testimony that um, they were all together and that the only person who left was Letitia and that there's no way she could have got him out of the house when they initially left the house, when they gathered a few personal belongings because the police were on top of it. They were checking everything that came out of that house. So now they're kind of driving cross country. And she says that at this point, you know, her mother is becoming increasingly stressed. She feels that she's being mistreated by police, or at least that's the story that she's selling to Harley. Harley is believing that her mother is being betrayed by, you know, Gannon's dad, and she's being mistreated by the police. And they are going from hotel to motel, cross country, trying to get back to Myrtle Beach. And then she starts to talk about the time that they spent in Pensacola. Again, she says that she never saw her mother leave that hotel room, but she can't speak for when she was asleep. She states that she absolutely was not with her mother at the time of the disposal. And I think that's where people are going to differ in what they believe. Is Harley a victim or is she an accessory? It, it's hard to say. My mind is like, like ping pong machine. I can't decide. Do I believe that Harley would have helped her mother if her mother demanded it of her? Yes. I think this girl was programmed and conditioned and controlled enough by her mother through the entirety of her life that she absolutely would have helped her. But on the other hand, it seems like if Letitia cares about anything, 
in this entire world besides herself, it may possibly be Harley and the dogs. So would she have put Harley in that situation or would she have done it by herself as to not make Harley an accessory? That is possible because the mother does seem through the story to kind of be, be really connected, whether it's in a healthy way or an unhealthy way. She's very connected to Harley. So I don't know. Now, when Harley was crying on the stand, and this was after the defense's cross-examination, the one thing that kind of struck me was there was one point where you could kind of see Letitia smile while Harley was crying, and that was really gross. But I, I don't know, you know, if it was, I don't know. I don't know if it was just a, something that the attorney said to her, and I, I, I don't know. But it was kind of sad. And now I think, well, when Harley looks back on the footage, if in fact she ever looks back on it, she may not want to, and sees that moment that we saw, that, that's going to be really, I'm sure, that's going to be a slap in the face to her, like the many that I think that she's had. So then the cross-examination begins. And he went a little bit gentle, not as gentle as the prosecution, but he is really trying to force Harley to say that her mother is um, suffering from mental illness. And what we see here is Harley kind of grows a backbone in the cross-examination. And I, I get the sense that she wants to sink her mom at this point. So it looks like there had been a meeting with Harley and the defense attorney at some point in a restaurant where he is very clear that Harley has told him some things about Letitia's mental state, you know, um, that she would often come home and find her crying uncontrollably in closets, that her mother's, you know, personality switched up all the time, that her mother liked to go by other um, names and other personas and identities, that her mother crashed, you know, the car at one point because she was so paranoid and thought that she saw her dead ex-husband sitting in the car with her, like all of these stories. And I can't imagine that the... The way that he seemed so frustrated with Harley, I tend to believe that she did tell him these things. And Harley's just like, no. Nope, didn't see her in closets, which she gets caught up on that, by the way. Um, that looks like she did, did indeed say that to him, but she tries to backtrack that. Well, I mean, she's in closets for lots of reasons. Sometimes she's in the closet on the phone. Sometimes she's in the closet crying. Well, you just said she's not in the closet crying. Harley very clearly in that cross-examination seems to be backtracking things that she has said to the defense and for some reason will not give an inch on saying that Letitia had any kind of mental issues previously. And she's asked, did your mother ever get treated for mental health issues where she clearly says no, never, and then gets caught in a lie on that because it comes out, there was some point where like the mother threatened to kill herself and then she disappears. And at some point, Harley and the aunt find out that she's been admitted to the hospital under, you know, psychiatric care. So it was really interesting because it seemed really deliberate that she was not going to give her mother a pass on this. She said at one point that, you know, she was very angry when she found out that her mother was pleading um, not guilty by reason of insanity. So I, I don't know if it's because she's so angry about that, that, you know, she's not going to be a part of giving her mother, um, you know, any ammunition for that defense. But she does get tripped up a couple of times in cross-examination. But overall, I think she, she did well in keeping herself you know, steady and, and answering everybody's questions on both sides. So I guess it really comes down to was Harley removing herself from any wrongdoing in her testimony? Was she not telling us everything she knew because it could implicate herself? 
So at one point, the prosecution tells us that contrary to what a lot of us believed all along, Harley was never given immunity. She came forward willingly and told the events. Well, if that's the case, then she would have had every reason to omit things that could incriminate herself. Um, he does tell her that the statute of limitations has run out and that she cannot be at this point um, arrested or held for being an accessory. But it might be too late, you know, for us to get any information out of her because if she gave her version of events back when she thought she could be held accountable, I mean, she's not going to change it now because then she's going to be just completely not credible in any way. So what do you think about it? Do you think that Letitia kept Harley in the dark and Harley really didn't know anything during this time? I think that she definitely at some point might have been getting weary of things, um, figuring out that her mother was lying about certain things. Um, but do you think she really, at any point up until she finds out that Gannon has been found in that family suitcase in Pensacola, do you think before that moment that she really thought her mother had anything to do with it? Do you think that she knew that her mother had anything to do with it? Because she also was there and forced by her mother to, you know, help cover her tracks? Or do you think that, you know, she is a victim of Letitia, you know, and that Letitia just goes through life victimizing everybody around her? Because no doubt, if you have ever been in Letitia's inner circle, you're probably not coming away from it, you know, without some scars. Tell me what your thoughts are on this girl. I have mixed feelings. I think there's a very good possibility that um, Harley's story is for the most part true, except that I think she got caught a couple of times in, you know, some lies with the cross-examination. Um, but I think she might be omitting little pieces, uh, whether those pieces were just things that she suspected but didn't have actual guilty knowledge of, like her mother didn't come right out and tell her, but on some level she suspected that her mother was involved and suspected that she was um, being asked to do things that was part of a cover-up? Or do you think that if Letitia ever cared about anything in this whole entire world, it was Harley and that she kept her in the dark intentionally? Tell me your thoughts. Tell me your thoughts on, you know, if the testimony was everything that you hoped for or if, like myself, you were just kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? Like, it was great to hear from Harley. We wish her well. Um... But we didn't learn too much. Everything we heard was kind of what we knew, just from a, a different perspective. Tell me your thoughts, and I'll see you soon. Bye.